Today, Joe Biden gives a speech on the soul of the nation. Project Veritas exposes another woke teacher, and Karine Jean-Pierre blames Republicans for keeping schools closed during the pandemic. We have got all of that and more. It's going to be a wild one, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. Happy Friday. I am Sarah Gonzalez and uh I want to tell you really quickly uh, about our friends over at Healthy Cell. Today's episode is brought to you by Healthy Cell. They've got a ton of different supplements. Uh, they're amazing. They'll help you with sleep, focus, or just a general multivitamin. And uh, they're not in pill form. They're in gel form. It's going to give you uh, way more absorption. you got to try them out. Go to HealthyCell.com news. Use code news for 20% off of your order. Uh, joining me for today's show is Eric July, of course, Blaze TV contributor and founder and owner of Ripaverse Comics which we are all very jealous about, uh, all of your success. You're, like, super rich and stuff now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just saying, oh yeah. my once you leave us, <laughs> remember the little people, please. Uh, also joining me is uh, Alex Stein, Blaze TV contributor and, of course, host of Conspiracy Castle and Alex Stein, both channels you should be subscribed to. It's yeah, but I have to, first of all, I don't like to be here with millionaire elitists. Like <laughs> so everything he says, take it with a grain of salt. Because this is the power that the we're top fighting. one percenter over yeah, here. Yeah, I know. What the heck, dude? You're gonna have, now because we make under 400k, the IRS is coming after us. So oh, I yeah. said, go after Eric <laughs> July, IRS. Do I, not mess I'm with just us saying, little people. The rich should pay their fair yes. share. So cut me a check. <laughs> and <make laughs> the yes, tax the rich, like my girlfriend AOC said. So, I want to. So I want to talk about, of course, Joe Biden gave a speech uh, in uh, Philadelphia last night about the soul of the nation, which, of course, it was a really weird scene. You guys, I know it was supposed to be like there was some blue in there. It was supposed to be a red, white and blue theme, but they set it up entirely wrong because this literally looks like he's just in the pits of hell giving a speech which I guess is not so far from where we're at right now in this country anyway, but um, he used this speech just basically to just attack and demonize what he calls MAGA Republicans, which if you think that they don't just lump you in with a MAGA Republican, if you happen to be a conservative and have conservative values, you would be dead wrong because they are just trying to dehumanize half of the country at this point. Uh, one of his claims was that Trump supporters are a major threat to this country, watch. We must be honest with each other and with ourselves. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Now, I want to be very clear, very clear up front. <clears throat> not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know, because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. Uh, in case you're wondering if you missed it, yes, the vibe the entire time was that. Very eerie, uh, very dark, uh, not good. I think Alex would say low vibrational energy. <laughs> yeah, for be. sure. You nailed it. Very low vibrational energy. <laughs> um, so I want to I want to play a few more clips for you guys um, to react to here because it just the the rhetoric that was coming out of this <clears throat> man's mouth was truly incredible. I I can't remember a time that it's been this blatantly obvious, the divisiveness that's happening from, I would say, one particular party. Uh, so Biden also claimed, this is funny, all of a sudden Biden really loves the Constitution and respects it and claims somehow that uh, <laughs> Trump supporters don't respect the Constitution or the rule of law at all, watch. Here, in my view, is what is true. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. And they're working right now 
as I speak in state after state to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies, empowering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards, backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence that are a threat to our personal rights, to the pursuit of justice, to the rule of law, to the very soul of this country. Now, um, you know, it's interesting because he also mentioned, of course, there, the, he mentioned there the election deniers, the election deniers. He also mentioned uh, people trying to sabotage upcoming elections. Now, when I, I want to I want to play this for you because he's he's trying to allude to the fact that the MAGA GOP is going to try to uh, disrupt your elections. But when we talk about elections, please remember that every election that I can remember happening where a Republican won, it was questioned by the Democrats every single time, including President Trump himself. So I, I just want can you guys remember a time where that was not the case before I play this clip? No, 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 no. When they lose, they usually. It's always. I mean, Stacey Abrams still says that she is the legitimate governor of Georgia. So I like it's just interesting, this projection that's going on here. Um, but uh, apparently Republicans are going to try to sabotage upcoming elections. I guess I, I'm just happy now that we're admitting that um, voter fraud is real. Watch. They see their MAGA failure to stop a peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election as preparation for the 2022 and 2024 elections. They tried everything last time to nullify the votes of 81 million people. This time, they're determined they to succeed in, in thwarting <laughs> the will of the people. That's why respected conservatives like Federal Circuit Court Judge Michael Ludwig has called Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans quote a clear and present danger to our democracy. I love that the guy, how good was his bullhorn that he had to be using that you could hear him, he had to be so far away and you could still hear the F Joe Biden uh, <sighs> chanting. No, he was getting heckled, but this is what makes me so mad. I'm sick and tired of pretending that the QAnon shaman was able to walk into the Capitol and was able to decertify an election. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just ludicrous that they're even still leaning into it. Like, he was gonna somehow write some sort of legislation and Donald Trump was still <laughs> going to be president. So this threat is just, uh, once again, it's like with the investigation of Donald Trump, this is just their third impeachment. They're still so scared of people that support Donald Trump that he has to spend this entire speech not talking about the massive inflation, not talking about the drug and sex trafficking that's coming across our border, not talking about any issues that actually plague American people, but instead making this about a fringe conspiracy group that is threatening our democracy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just really sad. Well, I think it's more than that, though, Alex. I think they are trying to portray this fringe conspiracy group to not be fringe, to be yeah. conservatives in general, to be half the country. I, that's just the, kind of the sense that I get from what he's saying. He's trying to say MAGA Republicans. It goes from Trump supporters mm -hmm. to MAGA Republicans to MAGA extremists. And they're trying to create this narrative that it's just all Republicans or conservatives in general. Basically, only the milk toast ones, uh, the McCain's, like, yeah. are the ones that, of course, he would consider or they, his side would consider, like, reasonable people. Ma mainstream, mainstream Republicans, the guys, right? It's, it's <laughs> the, basically the guys that seem to lean more towards them because, of course, they're the righteous ones. I'm going to be very serious for a second. I you know I've come on a show the last couple of years and I talked about how kind of considering the route that we're going in, I don't really think this is a sustainable thing as these guys start to sort of ramp up their rhetoric to where they are purposely lumping large swaths of people uh, in this sort of negative light. Uh, to present them as if they are the threat, um, especially as they advocate their own authoritarianism. And we know that to be the case. This is an objective. Uh, the, you cannot look at what you had Republicans that were in on it as well, but you certainly can't look at during the COVID situation and, and, and Democrats and you, you can't them talking about or acting as if they're against authoritarianism. 
You just simply cannot do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally impossible. We've seen that. But when I talk about what is sustainable and I, and I fear like where this rhetoric ends up leading to, the more I, I go back to this, I saw yesterday Hashtag national divorce was who um, was was trending again. It always mm -hmm. gets me excited, uh, <laughs> especially after coming from a a speech where this man is saying that something is a threat to the democracy, which I always say you're giving something props. So whenever you do that, um, if it is a threat to democracy, because <laughs> democracy is a very bad thing. But seriously. I don't want to share a government with these people. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I mean that sincerely. Like, I don't want to share a government with these people, and they certainly don't want to either. Mm. They're just really open about the fact that they have every intention on using that that institution to punish their political enemies and paint their political enemies in the worst way possible. And you consider it dehumanizing. I don't, wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. But this is not... I mean, it's funny we talk about that and you get all these people who are like, well, in order for something like that to happen, well, you would need a it would have to be a civil war or something like that. With rhetoric like that, what do you guys think we're heading to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe this isn't like I'm not speaking in hyperbolic terms of trying to make a hot take. This is not what it is. I think the most peaceful route in, in this at minimum is that this union cease to exist. Because if it keeps going down this route, because even if there's a transfer of power, how do you think they're going to react? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think that we are ensuring a lot of conflict and they're not going to let up. So I think it's best. It's not to say that it will be without conflict, but I do think it's best that we pull the rug from up under these people and whatever conflict happens out of that happens. But if we keep going down this route, it is going to get ugly because he can't keep saying stuff like that uh, to large swaths of people and people just be like, oh, just, we're just going to take it. No, it's not going to happen. Well, there's two schools of thoughts where, you know, you get the national divorce or you just stay together and be unhappy. And my parents got divorced. So do you want the country to end up like primetime, not in an Alex sign? <laughs> no, maybe we just stay in an unhappy marriage. But I don't know. I tend to agree. <laughs> I tend to agree with Eric um, it could be because it's not just Joe Biden saying this. It's Kathy Hochul telling yeah. New Yorkers if they you told you to get up out of there. She literally told you to leave. You are not welcome here. Yeah. What more do you need to be convinced? It's it's not that we're the hate mongers. These people don't want to share a country. They don't want you to exist. True. They yeah, don't want true. you to exist. They would be so happy if you didn't exist and they are telling you to leave. I don't know what more you need uh, to understand that that's what they want. Um, and of course, again, because they're always so good at gaslighting, uh, Joe Biden, towards the end of his speech, claimed that he was actually asking the country to, he wants you guys to come together. He wants you to unify after all of what he just said, watch. <laughs> that's why tonight, I'm asking our nation to come together, unite behind the single purpose of defending our democracy, regardless of your ideology. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not interested in defending democracy. Look, this is an ugly um, political philosophy. I think we've all been kind of indoctrinated through these public school education systems where they use that term to uh, as synonymous to freedom. And it couldn't be anything from the, further from the truth. When we have a you call a republic, it really doesn't matter what you call it, because at the end of the day, people are elected and that election is generally decided by a popular vote. So it's democratic in, in some sense. Mm -hmm. But you look at a lot of your neighbors, the people that you got go, go back, these crack smokers that you I'll go back and forth with on the internet. Those people's vote matter just as much as you as as yours do, and you see how much they despise you. So how anybody can look at this and say, "Well, democracy is a great thing," is beyond me because it's the absolute worst form of governance. As long as these people are as stupid as what they are. Yeah, that's totally true. Well, Eric, you're you will be thrilled to hear that Joe Biden did not stop about democracy. <laughs> um, he actually, I mean, it wouldn't be a Biden speech without a Biden gaffe. And he just, at the end, he just randomly was like, democracy! Watch. May God protect our nation, and may God protect all those who stand watch over our democracy. God bless you all. Democracy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you read the teleprompter wrong or something there. I God mean, bless you all, democracy. <laughs>
<laughs> well, listen, we know that the 2020 election was the most fair election and accurate election that we've ever had. And as long as these machines can hook up to the Wi-Fi or hook up to the Internet, I trust these elections and they'll always go in the right person's favor, I believe. It's not even, I mean, it's just, I know we gotta take a break, but it's like, it's the addresses of like people who, there's there's no address there, right? There's no property. It's mm -hmm. the dead people that continue to vote. It's, there's so many things. Um, and it's just interesting to hear them, of course, uh, say things like, oh, there are ways that you could actually stack the cards and change an election. That's weird, because I feel like that's what we just said, and you call this conspiracy theorists. Yeah, nobody's so. dead grandmothers ever voted uh, Republican. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, that is a fact. Um, <laughs> all right, we got to go take a quick break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So uh, look, home title theft, I, I heard about it and I was like, Come on, that's not real. There's no way that someone can like go online, uh, forge my name off the title of my home and take over as the new owner. Unfortunately, it's not often, but I was wrong. It's, that's, it's the first time that it's ever happened because this is a thing. And the title to your home is the only document that proves that you own it. So they can take out loans on your home, forge your name on a document stating that they're the new owner. They can do anything with your home at that point. And this is your retirement nest egg, so don't lose it. You can find out if you are a victim of home title fraud if you go to hometitlelock.com. Enter your address. They're going to send you a uh, free, no obligation home title scan. And this is how you're going to discover if someone is already camping on your home's title. Hometitlelock.com. Use my promo code radio and enter your address. It is hometitlelock.com. Project Veritas has been on a roll these last couple of weeks. Uh, yesterday, they exposed another school teacher at a different place than the previous place we showed you guys earlier this week for having, <gasps> you're going to be so shocked to hear, a hidden leftist agenda because as it turns out, you're not crazy for thinking that they are infiltrating your schools to indoctrinate your children. This is Jennifer Norris, Director of Student Activities at Trinity School in, in New York City. She was caught saying she pushes a political agenda and gives her students supplies to make posters for leftist political marches like Women's March and March for Our Lives. Uh, she also said two days a week she brings in speakers for the students to hear but does not permit any right-leaning speakers. Uh, and, of course, her most disgusting comments were related to her own white male students. Watch. Unfortunately, it's the white boys who feel like, uh, very entitled to express their opposite opinions yeah. and just push back. Well, there's a huge contingent of them that are just like horrible. Yeah. And you're, are you always going to be horrible? Yeah. Or are you just going to be horrible right now? Is there any saving these Republican like white guys? Who's I think they need to go. No, I think they're really awful people. Yeah. That, that's kind of what I, I'm afraid of with my white students that are rich. I'm like, do you ever have to deal with this? Because they're so protected by capitalism. It makes me sad. White guy. friends and like Dexter, so you're going to like go to. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I just wonder how many like... Yeah, oh no. Taking people out of the show Dexter. Oh yeah. This is like, we just need some vigilante Dexter. Oh so, like, yeah. Here's your community, your targets. Guys. Okay, wait, I was laughing, and then it took a totally different turn. <laughs> I didn't realize that she was talking about a mass murderer secretly killing her own students. I mean, anybody that saw the, the Showtime show Dexter, I mean, it was a hit mm -hmm. show. And it was about a guy who worked for the police department that secretly killed, you know, targets of his. And for her to make that joke, and I'm all about jokes, I mean... Pretty dark stuff. That's really dark. That yeah. she wants her students killed because they're they're what is it? They're benefiting from capitalism. <laughs> I mean, by what getting allowance every week? How are these kids? I mean, oh, wow, we're in the upside down world. Well, that's what I'm like, honey. Everyone benefits from capitalism. That's that's kind of the point. Like yeah. you are as well, sweetheart. And also. Um, she didn't look black or Hispanic. And she so made she's talking about, about white people, and I'm like, ah, mm, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I get accused of being white passing, so I'm not here to make judgments, but it seems to be something that we see a lot is just white people, white liberals bashing white people. And you're like, I. It's like the Spider-Man meme where they're both pointing oh, at each yeah, other. You're exactly. like, I, is it yeah. you? Yeah. Nah, this, look, teachers, I expect for them to act this way. I mean, I've long given up on that institution in terms of education. Um, I think it's safe even in areas that 
let's say aren't leftists, I think it's very safe to consider that there's probably some teachers that are somehow trying to infiltrate the minds of your children in some way, shape or form through the um, rhetoric they use, through whatever it is, the curriculum and, and kind of in injecting their own individual personal politics, certainly in that to see a world kind of come into fruition that they want to see. This is what they do. This is the long game that a lot of the leftists play. And this is why, I mean, I, I, I don't say it as a joke when I say if you want to help these future generations, you have to address the education system first and foremost. Um, and it's, it's not going to be pretty in terms of dealing with it. You know what I mean? This isn't something that you can just, oh, we get a couple of guys in these different uh, school boards and, you know, uh, that's not how it works. I think it's rotten from the core. And to be fair, it was designed to kind of be that way to churn out these little um, like minions, little little uh, soldiers for the state, which is effectively they're still doing it. So uh, it doesn't surprise me at all to see what we saw right there from uh, Project Veritas. Yeah, um, I want uh, I know my producer can hear me in the control room. I want to find out if these teachers that we've seen videos from Project Veritas this week, if they, like, are they fired? Uh -oh. Are they put on, that's what I'm wondering. It would tell you a lot about the school. Um, so I wanna try to, I'm not sure if it's happened yet, so we can always follow up. Okay, the one from earlier this week was put on leave. Uh, we are, we're not sure about this one yet, so we can follow up on that next week and uh, let you guys know. But speaking of how bad it's gotten in schools, a uh, school in New Jersey, this, I don't know how to say this, Mawa uh, Township Public Schools in New Jersey proposed a new health curriculum that forces uh, second graders to learn about genitals and gender identity. So... Um, you guys are in luck. Your kids are going to learn all about these things before you are ready. And seven and eight year olds must be able to list medically accurate names for body parts, including the genitals. They need to learn how gender role stereotypes may limit behavior. And yes, <laughs> and the guidance pushes topics such as gender identity in fifth and eighth grades as well. Fifth graders must be able to differentiate between sexual orientation and gender identity. Fun things happening in public schools. Oh, that's propaganda right there. Which I know, Eric. That's, that's, no, that's like legit. Like, well, propaganda. please tell like, them your tell them your coined. <laughs> get your kids. You got to get them out. Get your kids out of these schools. Look, and I say this as someone that obviously went to these rotten schools as well. Um, they're just rotten to the core, and they're getting progressively, for lack of better terms, worse. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is a kind of tough conversation to have with a lot of parents because they look at it like, well, this is the way that. You know, we do things. We have to do it. We kind of have to drop our kids off at these indoctrination camps. But if you really want to save them, there has to be an adjustment made like they're not letting up because for them, they look at it as it's so important. It's so vital to them to end it, to end up getting the, the this next generation of people to in order to get them to think like them. And it's not a secret as if you look to the political slants of the Gen Zers and the de facto of whatever gender bull crap that they uh, heed to and how that is like multiple like times of the previous generation in terms of how many people identify as this, this and that. What do you think that they're getting this information from? Mm hmm. It's still schools. Right, <laughs> well, I think right. even worse than that, though, when Barack's husband, Michelle, got rid of the square pizza at public schools, that's when they lost it. So that's really all you need to know. Just the fact that you can't get a good slice of square pizza. You need to take your kids out of these schools. So. The one last thing they had, and Michael Obama had to take it from us, please, if they bring back the square pizza, then maybe consider public schooling again. But until then... Homeschool your kids. I agree with Eric. Um, I do want to point out really quickly, too, before we take a break, that um, gender identity has a definition, obviously, in this particular school district. And the definition of it um, is a little bit different in, in the older grades. But for fifth graders, uh, it is the person's internal, deeply held knowledge of their own gender. So if you see that it's very, they're very careful in these definitions, it's not just a feeling anymore, it's knowledge. Um, and by saying it's knowledge, it's like, no, this is just fact, this is fact. If a student says that they are this, we have to go along with it, there's no feeling anymore. It is just a, a scientific fact, I guess, that you wanna be a, I don't know, a, a cat. <laughs> it's a clown show, man, like it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But I don't, like at some point I have to, I guess, give, I don't know, I try to give them some leeway, but at what point does it become child abuse if you know that they're 
doing these rotten things and you continue to drop your kid off at that, that camp. That's the, that that's the part where my, the people are going to be in the comments mad at me. That is why my okay child never spent a day at school with a mask on. Well, I just pulled him because <laughs> I'm not participating in child abuse. Well, my, my daughter, Lizzie, who identifies as a lizard, Highland Park has put a terrarium in the classroom, so there are some schools that still care. And they didn't put the temperature up to 82 degrees like we asked, but... The terrarium. You're working on it. There, we're working on it. Our legal team's working on it. But there are some school districts that are able to, you know, help shape these young children's minds. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> help. They are definitely helping shape these young children's minds, just not for the better. Um, all right. We got to uh, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay. I got to tell you my new favorite conspiracy. I didn't want to say it on here. So I met Dr. Zinn. Uh, the court has unsealed more of the uh, the detailed inventory of what was taken from Mar-a-Lago by the FBI. And it kind of shows, I don't know, how some items uh, marked as they were marked as highly classified records were just kind of commingled with certain personal items like clothes, books, news articles, nothing that they would need to take at all. Um, but the FBI seized it anyway. What could possibly be the reason for this, you guys, other than... I hate to say it because Trump said it probably way too often, but kind of feels like a witch hunt. It is. I mean, <laughs> let's call it let's call it what it is. But it, 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 I guess I could take it back to the first segment. It is that we did. I mean, I think that's why they keep yeah. bringing up the MAGA stuff. They keep bringing up Trump despite him. Uh, I know some people allude to the idea of them being fearful of him like going get at it again, which I think that's a little part of it. But I think it's more of just what they feel like he represents mm -hmm. more than anything. So that's all they have. He's not there anymore. So they, and they still need to cling to this idea. They look at it as a way to boost the morale of their own troops, uh, galvanize their own troops. Because, hey, is Trump bad? That's kind of the thing. So they have to cling to that, and that's really all that this is. Yeah, you know, it's the sheer arrogance, I feel like, of... They, I mean, they know, who, they know who Trump is. They know that he's not going to go down without a fight. He's going to try to expose this. They know that, yet they did this anyway. They yeah. took his magazines, they took his clothing, they took all of these things that were not relevant at all to the conversation. I can't think of anything other than just sheer arrogance of, like... We know that you're going to expose this. We just don't care. Yeah, I know. And I think Trump really, you know, you brought up the witch hunt. They have been going after him. But maybe he was a little too lenient on people they, they, you know, like Hunter Biden while he was president. Maybe he should have done this investigation on him. It seems like they're always the ones to start this, you know, uh, poking the bull. And what I hope it does is, you know, this investigation into Trump. And I hope, you know, he gets out of it and, and nothing's wrong. But I, I do hope they do the investigation uh, after Biden. But I don't know if that really makes it better. But uh, this is just setting a precedent where they will investigate somebody for having too many McDonald's receipts in their <laughs> closet, and that is classified information. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because it's like you don't want you don't want just a back and forth volleying of like, mm -hmm. well, you did it, so we're going to do it too. But we do have a lot of direct knowledge of some really shady, corrupt dealings that Biden has done, not only in uh, Ukraine, but also China. So uh, that had to do with his son. So it's like... It's just they've gaslit us so much that it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want just a back and forth just to have a back and forth. But that clearly needs to be investigated. There's enough there to be investigated. And it should be, I think. Well, I, I, again, that's the. Now, I don't think Republicans have the balls to do it. Well, yeah, but, but, that, it should but be. that's the kind of conundrum that I think non-leftists have been in for a while now and yeah. that they try to hold their opponents to this like ethical standard yep. that they themselves they hold themselves to but their opponents don't even care about that they don't care mm -hmm. about any of that they'll do whatever they're rogue they'll they'll try to punish their political enemies they'll t do whatever it takes and they often use it against i think uh the other side to say hey well why would you do that because you know you yeah you'd be like well y'all just did it and like who cares we can do whatever it is that we want and that's a difficult enemy to always combat it's the enemy that has no set of morals and ethics at all, but they certainly will hold you to the standard that you hold yourselves, mm -hmm. and that's about it. Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of uh, uh, fighting fire with fire, anyone in the Houston area are willing to travel to the Houston area, please contact me, DM me on Twitter, DM me on Instagram. Um, there's a little something that we're planning, uh, and we're going to push back, of course, civilly. 
But uh, I'd like to tell you about it and see if you're interested. So make sure that you uh, hit me up on social media and I can give you more details, of course, after properly vetting you to make sure that you're not a crazy leftist. Uh, I want to get to the uh, yesterday the at the White House, the wonderful, the lovely, the best example of how affirmative action is a huge failure. Corinne Jean-Pierre was asked about this nation's report card that we covered yesterday that showed uh, historic losses in learning in school-aged children post-lockdown, which is what, exactly what we said would happen, and they shut the schools down anyway. Well, she actually responded by blaming Republicans and, of course, Trump for closing the schools. Watch. What is the administration going to do about this severe learning loss? And does the administration shoulder any blame for not pushing schools to reopen sooner? So let's step back to where we were uh, not too long ago when this president walked into this administration, uh, how mismanaged uh, the pandemic, the response to the pandemic was, uh, how 47 percent of schools uh, were uh, in, in less than six months, uh, our schools went from 40 per 46 percent uh, to, to open to nearly all of them being open to full time. That was the work of this president. Mm -hmm. And that was the work of Democrats in spite of mm -hmm. Republicans not voting for uh, the American Rescue Plan, which $130 billion went to school to have the ventilation, to be able to uh, have the tutoring and, and the teachers and being able to hire more teachers. You know what? Uh, I think Trump does shoulder some blame here. I think Trump's uh, mistake was listening to all of these leftists in the government who were pushing him to yeah, come out strongly about shutting down. That's the thing. And he had some terrible positions, yes. uh, certainly in this regards as well. I mean, even But he also he, didn't have the power to shut these school right, districts no, down. It, it was, it was and that's what I'm saying. Like, it'd be one thing if she uh, addressed that part of it and got him for what he actually said and did. Mm -hmm. But what she's doing is in a way of like a hostage negotiation where they were the ones that really led the charge on school to all the teachers unions that almost unanimously support uh, Democrats were screaming at them, hey, don't, don't, don't reopen. Mm -hmm. That was on their watch. And it was they basically said, well, because you won't do what we want you to do, whether it is uh, require all of these sorts of rules, jabs, uh, all of that sort of stuff. Well, we can't reopen when you could have done that a long time ago. So they're treating it like it was a hostage negotiation, mm -hmm. which to be fair, that's exactly what it was. Well, yeah, because, I mean, if you recall, the CDC changed their guidance for schools based off of pressure from the yes. freaking teachers unions right. themselves. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, the, the heads of those teachers unions, they're not Republicans. No. <laughs> and they did not want to go in for in, uh, you know, in-person learning. They wanted, and, and it's like similar to Mayor Bowser, and I think it was the superintendent in San Diego, too, that said, if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to school. Yeah. You can't even go digitally. You can't even go yeah. online. So these people do not care about these kids. If they make them get vaccinated and sit in front of a computer at their house. So the idea that they're just trying to blame everything for Trump, I think when the elephant in the room gets noticed about, you know, the, the Fauci-ouchie, they're going to have to continue to blame it on Trump. So I think this is, they're just laying the groundwork for the, you know, orange man bad. That the, they, the really safe and effective? They have, yeah, the Fauci safe and effective Fauci Ouchie. Maybe that may be Trump's invention, too, because there's also a clip of all those, you know, Democrat influencers saying, oh, I would never do the Trump vaccine. I would never do the Trump. Mm -hmm. And then now they all did it. And, well, we know it's safe and effective. And we know that. You know, if you catch COVID, if you get if you get, if you get it four times, you catch COVID five times. At least the symptoms weren't serious, so it's safe and effective. Did you see that uh, the CDC or no, the NIH changed one of their parts on their website that it used to say the mRNA um, uh, spike protein does not last long in the body, and they very they quietly that. erased that. Yeah. We well, covered it on the show earlier this week. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still fit. Rewriting history right before your very eyes. Not on the, not just on that, but even just what this, uh, what Corrine Jean-Pierre just said. Like, no, it was the Republicans. It was yeah. Republicans yeah. Who, who wanted it's, to keep schools closed. It's, it's revisionist like, history. Yeah. It absolutely yes. is. All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back. We took off the mRNA stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams said that he will be returning to, quote, old fashioned methods of investigating concealed carry permit holders. Yes, yes, yes. Police officers in New York City will be conducting door to door checks 
as part of the background check requirements on potential gun permit holders included in this new gun safety law over in New York. So um, in case you guys have forgotten, we've talked about it on the show, but the background checks are going to require applicants to sit down for an in-person interview, submit four character references, a list of former and current social media accounts spanning the last five years, uh, or the, the prior three years, and disclose the names of their spouse or any other adults living at their home. And you're going to be required to uh, every three years renew instead of every five years. So you got to go in and do it all again. You know, it's funny. We were just talking off air. Alex was like, you remember not that long ago when it was uh, de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo? <laughs> yeah. And you, we were looking at them and we were like, boy, they are the worst. And now you look at that picture of uh, Kathy Hochul and <laughs> what's his face, Eric Adams, and you're like, nope. They were not the worst. Apparently, it, it could get worse, and here we are. Yeah, well, I mean, Eric Adams, you know, he's always at the diva lifestyle. He's always at the club. He's always partying. If anybody needs a gun, it's him, because Plexico Burris shot himself in the leg in a New York nightclub. So the <laughs> New York nightclub scene can be dangerous, is my point. So stay strapped. <laughs> but, I mean, this just goes to show you, wherever they take away the guns, like Chicago, the gun violence skyrockets. So... And it's not just the gun violence. I talk about this all the time. It's the bail reform and the fact that criminals know that they can commit a crime in New York City, like rubbing feces on a woman on the subway, and that person was out within 24 hours. So these criminals, when they go to their criminal college, which is another word for jail, they figure out where else they can go and commit crimes and not have to pay the punishment. And New York City is becoming a hotbed of criminality, and that's not going to stop by restricting citizens that can pass these background tests uh, from not having protection. Yeah, I mean, you look at the the law that they had that was just struck down by the Supreme Court. They just don't give a crap about the Constitution. They're like, yeah, they're going to strike that down and we're going to write three more laws. And then guess what? It's going to take a really long time for it to go through all of the court system before we get another determination. And mm -hmm. until then, we're just going to continue to to abuse the Constitution whenever we feel well, like it. It's more of uh, I think they just don't fear kind of that geographical area like yeah. at all. Like they don't they're not afraid of their citizens. So what on what other reason do they I mean, they can keep doing whatever the hell it is they're going to they want to do because they're going to allow them to. Do it. But I just think it's it, even as a, especially as a Texan to even imagine that like, oh, in order for me to be able to conceal carry, I have to ask the government for um, a permit permission, but not just like, oh, filling something out, which is stupid either way and shouldn't be a thing. Like you, you're lecturing me or we're having a conversation interviewing me to decide whether or not that I can be able right. to carry a weapon to exercise my second that's, amendment right. That's insane. But I think the fact that they're emboldened, it is New York after all, like they couldn't do anything like that here, but you can out there because those people have become far more accustomed to uh, that sort of tyranny. Which again, it's like, I, you guys tell me, maybe you have a different opinion. I, I agree with Kathy Hochul at this point, not because I think she should be kicking you out, but it's like, Go, go to Florida. Yeah. Come to Texas. It, come, come here. If you appreciate, like, your right to carry and, uh, you know, all of these other things that New York is completely screwing up, if you see New York and you're like, you live there and you're like, I don't like what this has become, come here. Yeah. Come here. I think that there are certain areas that are, are lost, and I think that is one of them. Yeah. I think there's spots out in the West Coast that are the same way, and you're not under any requirement to sit up there and go down with that ship. Right. It's nothing to... Uh, go get closer to your allies and live to fight another day. But you have to be realistic. And there's no sense of making your life miserable mm -hmm. um, just because you want to stay and fight. Mm -hmm. well, and I have to make this point. So the same person, Hochul, told people to go to Florida. Gavin Newsom ran ads, uh, you know, basically telling people to come to California. Yet Gavin Newsom's own in-laws moved from California to Florida. So people know there are places where the pasture is greener, so come to those places. But as the CEO, as a governor of, of your state, you should be encouraging more employees, more people to come to your state, not kicking them out. So that divisiveness, like we talked about with the Biden administration, it's just the left, the left's victimhood game plan where they can just pit us against each other. So we're fighting each other. We don't go after the people that are actually causing us these problems. Did you see that not only did Gavin Newsom's in-laws move to Florida, they also donated a ton of money to Ron DeSantis? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Can too. you imagine what that Christmas uh, dinner is like with those people? They're like, yeah, we really wish our daughter wouldn't have married such a giant <laughs> douche. I think it's crazy that they're eating a human baby at the Christmas party, but yeah. If it's Gavin Newsom, then you know, that's just speculation. You know, I'm sure he's a, uh, he's a blood drinker. He's on the same uh, diet as Hillary Clinton, for sure. <laughs> 
allegedly. And this is all allegedly. Oh, this is all allegedly. allegedly. But I'm just I telling you. I know the they, legal they, department they, appreciates They pass you. around, and this is all in a, in a video game. This is not real life, but in the Minecraft video game, when uh, Gavin Newsom and Hillary, they sit down and they drink the blood of a baby, and they just cheers, and they have a good time, and they talk about the liberal world order that they're creating. So mm, well, thank you, Gavin. Keep it up. Keep which, up the good work. Which is another reason that uh, national divorce sounds so <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I certainly don't want to right share, now. share a government with, ba- with blood drinking <laughs> weirdos, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you get, that's, look, I have some problems with it, but like, leave me the hell yeah. alone and let us just have our awesome utopia, and you guys don't go do your demonic crap, and let's see how it works out for you. It's uh, technically called spiritual. Spirit Cooking with Marina Abramovich. You can look it up if you're into it, but it's just something that the left has, you know, they've monopolized that. <laughs> well, I hope, I, I hope, I yeah, hope they've they monopolized they it if anyone's it. doing it. Look into it, wink, wink, but don't look into it. It's, you know, Spirit Cooking is very dangerous, and uh, Marina Abramovich, best friends with Bill Gates, best friends with uh, oh Jeffrey gosh, Epstein. I'm just here saying, you know, they, you know, they hang out with, on, they hang out with a lot of people on the left. That's all I'm saying. That's <laughs> yeah. all I'm saying. Next topic. <laughs> Next topic. Actually, let's let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> okay, maybe we uh, recently, officers from Customs and Border Patrol Office of uh, Field Operations sent a trailer truck claiming to be carrying baby wipes for a second inspection at a border crossing. This is in Laredo, uh, Laredo, Texas, and. Oh, a drug dog and a non-intrusive inspection uncovered just a just a cool little 1,935 packages with around 1,533 pounds of uh, alleged cocaine. And in case you're wondering, that amounts to about $12 million worth of cocaine. I do like that we just made the joke about alleged, allegedly, and they're like, this is alleged cocaine. It's like, I don't think anyone is carrying around that 1,533 pounds of like fake cocaine. No, that's Hunter Biden's SUV, I thought. <laughs> is that not Hunter Biden's uh, 18-wheeler company? Is that not? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought that was Hunter. I mean, it could be, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know who it was, but um, this is like really dangerous stuff that is happening uh, across our southern border, and I, our borders are. Our very own Kamala Harris hasn't seemed to really care. What is she doing lately? I was just about anyway? to say, what the hell is Kamala? Where is she? I ain't seen her in forever. <laughs> She's on vacation. She's just listen. Hey. It's very stressful. There's a lot of stuff going on. She needs a lot of time to I'm watch serious. Montel. I... I don't know where she at. No, she should. She should be at the border. I mean, and I we joke around a lot, but one of the biggest problems plaguing this country <laughs> is the drug trafficking. I mean, over 108,000 drug overdose deaths this past year. Mm-hmm. They don't ever talk about it. In his speech, you know, Biden's MAGA, you know, maggot speech, whatever you want to call it. He didn't mention the drug problem in our country one bit. And we are, we're having something way worse than the crack epidemic. This is the fentanyl epidemic. It's worse than any opioid crisis we've ever had. And every single person in power is not doing anything to make it stop. And, you know, I think that we should hold them liable for it. It, it really is sad because if you, you know, they always, they always try, and the media helps them, um, tout their position as the passionate, the compassionate position. You don't want to, I mean, these people are just looking for a better life. And in reality, it's like you are encouraging these people to put themselves in danger over and over and over again when you're talking about the people who are trying to cross the border. You're well, allowing all of these drugs to come in and kill Americans all across yeah. the board. It's complete, it's the opposite of compassion. Well, it's, um, that's the reality of kind of this failed drug war and that's just what it's been for the last decades. It continues to ramp up because they, it's not like they have really changed any sort of policies to encourage or discourage what it is that we have with this drug, with this disastrous drug wars that has had disastrous impact to various communities for a very long, long time. But that will require them to actually get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I don't see them doing that. I don't see them doing that either. Uh, All right, everyone have a wonderful and safe holiday weekend. We will not be here Monday because every once in a while we do like to enjoy a, a day off. So Eric July, make sure you check out Ripaverse Comics. Alex Stein, host of Conspiracy Castle, and Alex Stein on YouTube. Check them out.